get to know Jim Morrison? I don't think I got to know him. He was a very moody kind of a distant guy. He was a little scowly. And he had this pair of snakeskin pants that he wore every single day. The same <laughs> pair. So I didn't want to get too close to him. <laughs> I mean, really. But, um, uh, he, you know, it was troubling to watch him on stage because that was the first time that I ever was... Um, I, I was always a folky, and so I'd go see these little folk music acts, you know, at the Ashgrove and places like that, little clubs. That was the first time I ever saw one of those big rock and roll concerts. And the way that the audience and the people that have maybe a terrible identity crisis they were working on would project themselves up onto the stage, onto Morrison, and then just kind of idolize him. It was this like kind of narcissistic feeding frenzy. It was really disturbing. And it was disturbing for him, too, although he was mostly kind of unconscious. He was a big drinker. People think of him as a drug addict. I think he was just kind of a drunk, you know. And um, some may think he was talented. I thought his band was fabulous. I love that. It was a power trio, one of the early power trios. Great guys, very solid guys. I liked them all. I got along with really well with them. But I'd see him on stage, and he'd pick up the microphone. He'd kind of threaten the audience with it. And eventually, he got to throwing it out at the audience and bashing heads. So that was got him in some trouble. But that was kind of my experience with him. You know, it was troubling to me. I didn't like that exchange of the audience with, I thought it was unhealthy the way that they were projecting themselves up on the stage and needing to be up there. It made me feel like they didn't know who they were. 